and this one was the probably the first one that broke out the back. Like, yeah. Stand right up here where I can hear you, where I can hear you. Okay. Right next to you. Tell me what happened now. Okay, uh, a guy in a white truck tells us to uh, um, that the gas tank was open and to pull over. And it, uh, the tag was hanging, one or two. We didn't know which which, so we pulled over because I didn't want him to be driving with the black tank was dangling. So um, I tried to fix it to see if it was fixed, but then a guy in a, guys in black cars jumped out with guns and asked where the money was. And um, one, one guy in the car with, with the other guy, with my, with my, my buddy, and uh, start, uh, start shooting. And I took off the rim. You took off the rim? Yes. Now, how many, how many of y'all were in the car? Just two of us. Just two of y'all? Yes. And your buddy, he's, what, did I hit him right there or what? Yes. Okay, y'all, neither one of y'all got hit? No. Really lucky, really, really lucky. All righty, all right. Probation is a uh, is a. Uh, Hey, first of all, Chief, your name? Uh, Chief Pete Barreau. Spell your, first, uh, spell your last name. V as in Victor, E-R-O-T. Chief, tell me what the heck happened your name. Well, what we can determine, we had so many different calls coming in, from a road rage incident to someone possibly having a fight on the side of the road. When we arrived at the scene, we had multiple agencies, Patton Village, County, and Splendora. Uh, we realized there was more to it after we had talked to the victims. Uh, it appeared to be more than a road grade in incident, uh, possibly a carjacking or an aggravated robbery. Uh, witnesses came forward as we were at the scene a few miles down the road, or say a mile down the road, and approached us and told us that they saw a male run into jacking a box, jack in a box into the restroom covered in blood. So at that time, other officers came here, uh, Splendor and Pat Village. Uh, they did identify that the man would, had barricaded himself in the restroom, in the men's room. At that point, a uh, decision was made by myself to try to make contact with the, with the individual. Took out our uh, mega horn, um, hoping that we did not have to make a tactical tactical entry. We were prepared to do that. Uh, things turn turn fortunate for us that we were able to make contact with him via the megaphone. Made contact with him. He was ready to give up. He was compliant. 
He, we had no idea at this point that he had been shot during the incident. And it appears at this time he was probably shot by one of his co-conspirators, one of his partners. Okay, now this started a gas station down here. <laughs> Tell me what happened from there that you're, with the victims in here. Well, the victims, all that I can say right now is they were getting gas and off of 610 somewhere. Don't know if they were followed. Uh, that's what, what it appears at this time. They were followed. Uh, the victim thinks that they saw him with some money in his hand. He was out of town. He was from Georgia. They followed him. There was a white truck uh, and this other car that we have uh, Towed. They, after they exited or uh, after they uh, went over the Creekwood exit, they decided uh, to make their move on this, on the victim. They boxed him in. They approached the vehicle and tried to either rob or we're not real sure at this point, uh, but we know that. Uh, Firearms were discharged. We know that there was two weapons involved. We have only, at this point, recovered the one. Uh, you get quite a bit of glass blown over the car. And absolutely. The car. Tell me about that. Uh, we had uh, the back glass was blown out. The passenger side window was blown out. Uh, to to the best of my knowledge, we believe that the shots were fired from inside the vehicle. By the by, the subject, the suspects did fire their weapon uh, inside the vehicle, which caused the, the glass to break. Uh, at that point, I believe that the the suspects realized it was going wrong real quick, and decided to get out of there. All right, what about now? You uh, you got the one of the victims, the driver, was hit over the head. Do you think we have a discharge there of a weapon when he was hit? Very possibly that when. The suspect came to the driver's side. Um, he did strike the victim on the head. It's very possible that the weapon discharged, put another round in, uh, put the magazine back in. The magazine fell out from what I understand, put the magazine back in, maybe chambered around, and that's how the, uh, the other suspect was shot. Where are these suspects from? It appears that the suspects are from the northeast area of Houston. Or Houston? Homestead, Til Tidwell, Mesa area. Okay. And so the one that was shot, uh, stable condition, everything else? S uh, suspect that was shot was stable condition. It was through the bicep, uh, entry and exit. Uh, it does appear that these two individuals are involved uh, with the gang on north side. Okay, now what about the uh, victims? They both jumped out of the car then were able to jump out of the car and start running? One of the victims was trying to get the attention of the other to run. He couldn't get his door open because the suspect was standing at the door. The passenger was able to exit the vehicle, did start running, and as he was running, the suspect fired rounds at him. He discharged his weapon at the... At the victim as he was running away from the scene. Now tell me about the, the type of weapon you found and the type of ammunition you found in there. Uh, the type of weapon, uh, one weapon was recovered from the suspect's vehicle. It appears to be a 40 caliber. Uh, it was loaded, uh, had hollow points, and it was cocked and locked and ready to go. Hollow points definitely do some damage. Absolutely, absolutely. Meant for mainly one thing, okay. that is damage and destruction.